Good afternoon, good morning, good day, whatever time you happen to be watching this. Welcome, Cellar Chats, here at the Second Glass. I'm hanging out in the beautiful cellar as per usual, and we are tasting and drinking Chardonnay this week for the weekly wine flights, you know, and we're doing Chardonnay from around the world. And as I say this, I am listening to Daft Punk's Around the World in the back of my mind. I wish that I was tech savvy enough to lay that over this so that you can all hear what I'm hearing in my brain. But that being said, maybe you guys are smarter than me. You can put it on in the background. So a little Chardonnay flight because you know what? People love Chardonnay and there's a good reason. It's freaking delicious. So we're starting off this week with a little Burgundy, Dominique Conan. This is their Bourgogne Blanc. These guys are based on in the Mekong. And then we're going to pop on over to Santa Barbara for the always lovely Presqu'ile Chardonnay. And we're rounding it out in, you know, the place of places, Australia, to Victoria with the MWC Chardonnay, which I really, really love. So let's get it rolling. Dominique Cornin, um, really lovely estate, as I mentioned, located in the Mekong region in southern Burgundy. So we're basically, it's essentially the last part of Burgundy proper before you get to Beaujolais. Um, you know, family's been in the business of growing grapes um, for quite some time. They founded the winery in 1993, I believe, is when when the uh, the domain was officially established. Um, and they make some they make Chardonnay in Puy Fusse, which is another like specific area within the Mekong. Um, they make some stuff from Beaujolais, and then they make this lovely Bourgogne Blanc, um, all done in tank. So just a lighter, crisper. Good amount of texture, um, but not like a heavy handed uh, Chardonnay, but just really, really lovely. You know, and the Mekong always has represented like really great values in Burgundy. Um, and to this day, it still does. I mean, it's, I mean, I'm sure it'll change soon as people continue to look for options that are burgundy but don't cost you know an arm and a leg the macon becomes like the focus point chablis has gotten quite a bit or expensive and the macon what's really lovely about this part of burgundy for me when we're talking chardonnay is that it does both styles really well it does a cleaner fresher style um really well especially when you're drinking like macon village or something of that nature but there's a long history of like more richer, fuller oak influenced styles that kind of remind me of like a Merceau or something of that nature coming from Puy Fusse. And Dominique Cornin kind of like really goes right down the middle. They make a little bit of both. Um, this one, like I said, all stainless steel it does get some like lees stirring and things of that nature. So you get some richness, but it's overall, it's a bright, fresh, great way to start the flight this week. Mm. Beautiful orchard fruits, a little more on like the baked orchard. Um, I believe it was a fairly warm vintage for them. This was the 2020 Bourgogne, Bourgogne Blanc. Mm. Oh, yeah. Again, more on that like Granny Smith apple instead of like Red Delicious or like pink lady apple where there's a little more fruit. These are a little brighter, fresher, crisper, a little bit more of that like, um, what is the word I'm looking for? I don't even know. Just bright and fresh. I'm gonna keep saying the same thing over and over again because that's what it's doing for me. Excellent entryway. It's a beautiful day outside. I mean, I know the flights don't start tonight because well, generally speaking, second glass is closed on Tuesdays but they are having a special Italian dinner. Hope some of you are coming out for that. But these flights start tomorrow um, in such a good way to kickstart this week. It's gonna be a beautiful classic spring week here. Um, and that wine makes me so, so happy. All right, so again, sorry, before I move on, that is Dominique Cornin, their Bulgarne Blanc, 100% Chardonnay from the Mekong region. Moving into California world, this is Presqu'ile, and this is their Santa Barbara County. These guys, we featured them before, but just a little backstory. They're based in the Santa Maria Valley, which is a smaller appellation within the larger Santa Barbara County. The Santa Barbara County bottling, most of the fruit comes from their estate in Santa Maria, but they do purchase a little bit of fruit at a couple other places. Um, and kind of like in the same realm as the Dominique Cornin, 
they, they bridge that gap where they make really bright and fresh styles of Chardonnay, but they are using a little bit of neutral oak here. Um, I think they use, or they have used in the past, some concrete fermentation. So you get a little more texture, a little more roundness, um, which really helps balance out the ripe fruit that you get. But Santa Barbara is a pretty cold place. So again, we're leaning more like lemon citrus, a little bit of lime citrus, um, green apples, but kind of gearing towards a little more riper fruits because again, we are in California, so it is a warm place. Mm. Beautiful on the nose, really mineral, very fresh. We're super close to the ocean here. Hmm. Wow. And you know, for me sitting here tasting these, the Dominique Cornin, great texture. Like I said, has that beautiful like Granny Smith apple. It's not like hyper bright like a Chablis, but it's really minerally and you know, it's on the cleaner, brighter side. The Presqu'ile on entry actually feels brighter and more citrus driven, but then on the back end, there's just more texture, more roundness that really like kind of envelops your palate and gives it that great little like transition from bright and fresh, good texture to like a little more rounded, a little more complexity, um, but still like on the lighter side of Chardonnay. Mm. So, I mean, if you are a big fan of big, heavy, rich, more oaked and buttery styles of Chardonnay, these first two may not really land for you, but they are great options for summertime. And they're really great for having, you know, at parties or with a group of friends where maybe everybody has a different preference. And some people like light and fresh and some people like fuller body. It's kind of like, again, it's a little Goldilocks, if you will. And then we're gonna jump on down to Victoria, Australia for the MWC, which, you know, I don't think Australia doesn't necessarily have, like like with California and France, have the reputation for making great Chardonnay, but there are some truly spectacular Chardonnay producers. Um, a lot down in this Victoria, and even further down in the Yarra Valley, which is pretty, you know, deep down, um, pretty close to, oh my gosh, pretty close to the ocean as you're like staring down into like Tasmania and things of that nature. Um, but this wine, Really cool project. The MWC is kind of like part of like several different tiers of labels under like a, a grand winery, which is called the McPherson Wines. Um, that's what MWC stands for, McPherson Wine Co. And the MWC line kind of represents classic French styles of wine. They make a Pinot and a Cab, they make a handful of things. Anyways, of the three, and this is maybe not too surprising, this is definitely the richest, the most rounded. It's got a little more of that kind of like caramelized buttery character, but it's not overwhelming. It still has a good amount of acidity, and that's because it comes from Victoria, where it is a fairly cold climate. Um, in case you guys didn't know, not all of Australia is hot and like, you know, dry. Like Victoria is yeah, it's somewhat dry, but this is a part of like Australia where like they always... I lived there for a while, so they always said, you know, four seasons in a day. It can be super hot one minute, and by mid-afternoon, it's freezing cold and raining, and overnight, it's icy and snowing, and by morning, it's, you know, 75 degrees and beautiful. So you just never know what you're going to get. So you have a lot of shifts in weather, which helps retain some acidity, especially when you have those cooler nights. Definitely, like, a little bit, like, toasty oak caramelized butter on the nose. Mm. plenty around this plenty of richness but on the finish like once you get past that like like i said that little bit of you know um butter characteristic there's a lot of fresh like zesty lemon lemon peel characteristics that like cut through that that keep it from being overwhelming which to me makes a really great balanced chardonnay with a little more of that richer tone that people look for so again this week we're going around the world, again, cue Daft Punk's around the world, uh, with some Chardonnay, starting out in Burgundy with some Bourgogne Blanc from Dominique Cornin, heading over to Santa Barbara for a Presqu'ile's Chardonnay, really lovely stuff, and we're going to end it down under with the lovely MWC Chardonnay from Victoria. Thank you guys for tuning in. Be safe, 
Say hi to your friends. Say hi to your family. Come out, have some flights. Be good. And I'll see you next week.